Well, breaking news overnight to start our Sunrise Smart Star. Charges currently pending after police say that a teen boy stole an RPD cruiser from an active scene, crashing it in the city. Officers tell us that they were out a little after midnight working a different call on Spencer Street when they watched the 16-year-old get into that patrol car and take off down the road. It was found later crashed at Lake Avenue and Harding Road. That young suspect taken into custody. He is getting treated for minor injuries, we're told, from the accident. That investigation is open. And also breaking overnight, a SOTUS man arrested after deputies say he took an axe to a victim's car during a domestic incident. They say that 38-year-old Keith Downey, here on your screen now, used a wood-cutting axe to damage the vehicle while someone was inside in the driver's seat. This was on Brantling Hill Road, reportedly around 1030 last night. He faces charges of reckless endangerment, menacing, and criminal possession of a weapon. Your sunrise traffic at 648, fog the story for many here around the city waiting for that to burn off the view from our sky eye. Usually we'd be showing you the bridge over 490, the west side, but yeah, that's what we're dealing with currently. We can tell you the one issue we've been tracking throughout the 6 o'clock hour of sunrise, that crash on 90 at the throughway exit, a car into the guardrail in the median. State troopers still on scene, but traffic is flowing. All lanes open going both directions. A convicted felon accused of killing a taxi driver in Rochester last month pled not guilty to first-degree murder. Prosecutors say last month, 36-year-old David Porter got into the back seat of the cab, which was being driven by 45-year-old David Treese. We are told Porter pulled out a gun, demanding money, before shooting Treese several times. RPD further says Porter continued attacking Treese even after he was shot and left for dead. Porter previously charged with second-degree murder. However, prosecutors explained to News 8 why that charge was upgraded. What murder in the first degree does is it takes murder in the second degree, felony murder, and adds an intentional component to it. So if somebody's committing a felony um, and they intentionally, or it's alleged they intentionally kill somebody during that felony, um, then murder in the first degree uh, can be appropriate charge. Porter is being held at the Monroe County Jail without bail, and his next court appearance will be July 9th. The full trial expected to start sometime late October. The man who admitted to a deadly drive-by shooting last summer in, the, in Rochester is going to spend the next 18 years to life in prison. It was in July. Teodoro Rivera Jr. drove through an intersection in a stolen car and fired at a man out in front of 40-year-old Sayo Rios' home. Rios was hit and killed by a stray bullet while just sitting on his porch. He was not the intended target. Rivera pleaded guilty to second degree murder as well as a weapons charge. State police say they're looking for more possible victims after a trooper arrested a man who they say raped a young girl. The Ontario County District Attorney's Office tells us that in April, troopers went to find uh, this man here on your screen, 28-year-old Joshua Abril Alisea, uh, his apartment in Canandaigua trying to serve a search warrant, and that is when they say he walked outside with a minor who later told troopers she had been raped by him. Anyone with concerns, if you recognize this man or think you have any additional information about him, you're asked to please come forward, call state police at the number on the top of your screen, 585-398-4100. Campus security and other staff at the U of R quickly moved in to break up the pro-Palestinian encampment on the Quad. The protesters there have been calling on the U of R to cut financial ties with Israel over its war in Gaza. A spokesperson for the university says they do recognize the freedom of expression, but say they've reached the point where it's time now to restore campus life back to what it was following numerous conduct violations. Two people not affiliated in any way with the university were arrested yesterday morning for damaging a tent leading up to commencement. Nearly a dozen students have been suspended there following these recent protests. Two of the schools in our area have been selected as new testing grounds for this educational program the state is trying to roll out. The goal here is trying uh, to maybe mix up this training for educators and show them how to apply different ways of teaching and learning in the classroom. Aran Spitzer live in the studio explaining the new theory. Aran. Irondequoit High School is one of 23 schools chosen across the state participating in the new plan pilot. PLAN stands for Performance Based Learning Assessment Networks, a program training educators to apply different ways of teaching to their students. This comes from a belief that leaning too heavily on standardized testing isn't ideal. The new program looks to push for more educational tools, requiring students to apply what they've learned through projects and presentations. The Director of Humanities with West Irondequoit Schools explains how this could impact learning project-based learning and assessments matches that up a little bit more effectively so you have um, learning experiences in the classroom that 
prioritize, um, you know, critical thinking skills, research, writing, discourse, collaboration, um, application of all of those skills to authentic real world, real world scenarios, all those kinds of things. And then what might an assessment at, say, the end of the year look like to show can they do those things independently and to what extent? She adds that the work hasn't started yet, but the goal is to gather the team this summer to start developing a curriculum. Padilla High School in Rochester was also selected. Guys, back to you. Ron, thanks for the insight. $5.3 million coming to the city to help maintain this piece of our skyline, the Frederick Douglass Susan B. Anthony Bridge. That bridge, taking all the cars back and forth over 490 over the Genesee River, was constructed in 2007. State officials say the project will strip the paint off the bridge and give it a new coat, and that will help protect it from the weather to also extend the life of the bridge. It's the first maintenance project to get underway here, and as for the color, it will be the same as it is right now. For the first time since 2008, nonstop flights to Las Vegas are on their way back to the Rochester Airport. These Southwest Airline flights will start in October on the 3rd specifically and will initially run four times weekly, Sundays, Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Passengers can start booking those flights for October and November right now. Taking you inside the huddle, we are hours away from the full NFL schedule getting released. That's tonight at 8. But they do these leaks in the buildup, so we got word on one of the Bills games on the schedule. It's week two on the road. The heated rivalry between Buffalo and Miami picks up right where it left off against the Dolphins at Hard Rock Stadium. The two teams playing on Thursday night football, the first game of the season for prime video in the last eight years since the league has been doing this. Teams that play Thursday night in week two on the road, they've always been at home the week before. So while it's not officially, officially confirmed, we do expect the Bills to be in Orchard Park kicking off their new campaign. Buffalo's been busy picking up a lot of wide receivers. The newest one, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, MVS for short, was on the Chiefs the last two seasons, their Super Bowl runs. The 29-year-old only had 21 catches for one touchdown last year. But at 6'4", a 40-yard dash clocking in at 4'37". He's fast and adds a deep ball threat that the Bills don't really have. He signed up for a one-year contract. It's worth up to $4.5 million. And while the off and on rain uh, might have put a damper on things for the week, it's not nearly enough to wash out the Lilac Festival going on strong here in Day 6. And it is Seniors Day featuring special activities designed for older adults and some lunch deals. Can't forget that live music as well since today's headliner is a local favorite, the Sky Coasters. They take the stage at 7. And for all things Lilac Fest, we have you covered on Rochester First. Dot com. Yeah, yeah, get out there. Brennan, you were saying Sky Coasters. Very, yes. very much beloved here in Rochester. Yes, long time ban and don't sleep on going out there midweek. Mm. I know people do the first weekend, closing weekend. Right. You don't like the crowds, walk around, go lunchtime. Yeah, yeah, good point. And the rain chances are very low, yep. uh, especially in Highland Park. Uh, the rain that we're calling for for today, Bristol, uh, Penny, and a lot of people uh, forget that uh, we've got a lot of viewers across the region. Yeah. I'm trying to cover them all. We've sure. got rain for some and not for others. I bet even some spots along the shoreline get sun. Uh, Ooh, hey, we'll I like that. that. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, something to look forward to. And tomorrow we've got a lot of sun. I got numbers that are going to surge well into the uh, 60s and 70s here. Just got to get rid of this. We got oh, rid of the bugs fog, from a few moments ago. Yeah. yeah. Brutal out there. Uh, eight day forecast. So uh, I mentioned the warmth on Friday. 76, maybe that's too low. Oh. That's uh, 77, 78 degrees Friday afternoon. We'll see how you do with the forecast, Jeff. Yeah. Still not 80 at the airport waiting for that. That's thank right. you, James. And thank you for watching us this Wednesday at sunrise. We'll see you back here at 725. Have a great day. And CBS Mornings is up next. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.